Hi, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mr. Austin, the guy with the soprano. I'm excited, guys. I'm very, very excited about the title of this video. You know what I am going to talk about. Your boy just graduated. Listen, completing your bachelor's degree is like a huge achievement. If people are going to judge you for celebrating this, I just don't know why. Spending so much time in class, submitting your assignments, and getting your, your, your marks. <laughs> Guys, I kill this bachelor's degree. So today, I just want to share with you uh, what I studied. I graduated from bachelor's, bachelor's of TESOL, teaching English to speakers of other languages. Nope, this is not a certificate. There is a certificate in TESOL, and I did a bachelor's degree, an entire degree in this. And to me, uh, was it really worth it? I, I think it was really worth it for me. And it was my second degree. I, I finished my first degree like over 10 years ago. And then now I'm, I've got two degrees. I'm a double degree holder. Is that, is, that, is that what they say? Anyway, yeah, I've got two bachelor's degrees. And the sad part about it is the first time I didn't graduate, I didn't go for the ceremony. Now there's no ceremony because of COVID as well. Like, <laughs> what's going on? Every time I get an opportunity to, to wear the, 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 the gown, something happens. Lord, anywho... I hope, I hope we get a chance that we get to go to, I mean, we got to, I hope we get a chance to do the ceremony, to attend the ceremony. I would really, really love to attend that because that would have been my first, that would be my first time on stage getting my certificate in my gown. Listen, I've been dreaming for this moment for the longest time. So, um, I just want to highlight a few things about this this degree nope i'm not sponsored this is not a sponsored video and i hope i hope if they see this they'll ask me to sponsor they'll ask me to do something for them they sponsor me so this degree is a very flexible degree it's actually like a very practical degree there are no exams <laughs> that is so good so if you're looking to take a degree if you don't have a degree and you're hoping to take uh, a degree go ahead and do it this degree is really worth it if you're looking to become a teacher very affordable it's very very cheap and did i say flexible yeah, it's flexible because the scheduling you are responsible for the scheduling you schedule it according to your free time it's designed for teachers people who go to work so it's part-time and that's one thing that i always want to stress like you know i think we as african um african uh africans or african parents or older people we should we should really acknowledge and practice the part-time way of studying you know, I found this degree very much easier because I was working and studying at the same time. So what I learned from my work, I would apply it to my studies, from my studies to my work. So it made things very much easier. And sometimes the work, the assignments that I was given, it was things that I, that I was already doing or I had already done from my workplace. I'll just transfer it to my home, to my assignments and boom, killing it. So yeah, um, it was very easy. And you can start anytime. Right now, that is uh, it's a pandemonium. People are doing it online, and it is all well for them. So let me go. Let me highlight a few courses that I've taken with this um, degree. I needed to complete hundred and twenty one credits. <laughs> yes, hundred and twenty one uh, credits, and actually this included forty classes. I'm going to highlight a few and just talk about them just a little bit and I'll leave a list at the end or even at the down in the description of the classes that I've taken and you can look them up. So let's get started with, 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 with some of them. The first I'll highlight is uh, Multiculturalism in ASEAN, Society Study in Asia, Development of Social and Life and Life Quality. So these three, of course, they talk about Asia, uh, Multiculturalism in ASEAN. ASEAN is, is, is like, uh, if you're from Botswana, South Africa, Namibia, Zimbabwe, you know SADC. So um, what SADC is to South to, to Southern Africa, it is ASEAN is to Southeast Asia. Wait, did I say it right? What SADC is to us, people from south, the Southern part of Africa, ASEAN... <laughs> Yo! Yes. In Southern Africa, we have SADC. Uh, in, in Southeast Asia, they have ASEAN. Okay, I, I, I guess you understand. So you learn about that and the education system and just the culture, how education and culture come together. So that, you know, sometimes uh, education, uh, as a teacher, you need to respect, you know, other people's culture, 
other way of teaching or doing things. Because yes, when you get to Thailand, you are going to learn a lot about that culture so that you don't disrespect them when you teach and certain things that you need to know and have to do. So you also learn about Thai for communication. You learn the basics. I think I still remember what I've learned for, uh, from this class. You learned uh, your introductions, ordering food, uh, directions, and so many other things. I remember the assignment was to go out and practice your speaking with a native, your native Thai speaker, and you had to record yourself. Oh, <laughs> I watched my assignment uh, the other day and I cried. I broke the Thai language. And I was surprised why I got a B when a lot of people got, a, got A's. But now I understand. That was a fair mark. And then we also learned about ethics and life, learning skills for success, health for life. Come on. These three, I think, that they were just requirements from the ministry. Health for life. You just write something about health, ethics and life, ethics and just life in general, learning skills for success. What do you need to, to succeed? Waking up at four. So we're just reading articles and then we just analyze them. Now, this is the part. This is the most interesting part now. Introduction to linguistics, phonology, and morphology and syntax. You learned about the uh, enunciation, the way you pronounce the words, transcribing. Like, you know, when you open your dictionaries find, to find the definitions, you're always, uh, you always see some form of writing. I'll just put it down here. So you learn how to write and read that. It's very exciting, but for me, it was quite challenging because... I'm more, when I watch stuff, I'm more influenced. My television is more uh, American, but we are educated under the British system. And I think my speaking as well is more British because I've got my T's. So it was very frustrating sometimes not knowing which one, which character to put in there, the shawarma. Listen, but it was quite exciting. And I did bad with my phonology because I took it as my first class. That is an advanced class. So yeah. You also learned uh, understanding, learning, and teaching, learning in academic discipline. Listen, I cannot remember some other things because I did them like way back in 2016. But um, academic disciplines, we learned like the methodologies, um, uh, the methodologies, way, uh, ways of teaching, and just general ideas. Which brings me to other, other subjects here. English language teaching methodology. See, the methods, teaching, listening, and speaking. This, you learned the steps of following up on how you can teach your, your students uh, listening and speaking and where to start, how to follow up. This goes also to teaching writing, teaching writing. The steps that people follow as, uh, yeah, as you teach them to write, like your, your style of writing, if it's creative writing, they follow some form of, some form of that. And also teaching grammar and English grammar. So when it came to English grammar, I remember my professor, stayed in Botswana for some time. He works in a peace corp. So he used to reference Botswana. So I did my English grammar uh, practical presentation in, in how to teach Botswana. Actually, you just, you just, in this course, sometimes you just choose any kind of language and how see how you can apply the methodologies that you just learned into that language. Yeah. So um, did I mention that this, this does not have exams? Yes, this degree does not have exams. Everything is practical. You do your presentations. Yes, there are small tests. You do your group work, your discussions, um, debates, you know, just course and practical work. You also learn English 1, English 2, and English 3. I don't remember what is English 1, but English 2 is the APA style of referencing. It's, it teaches you how to reference and how to write your, your style of writing. APA is some form of referencing style. American, American something something referencing. Yeah, like you've got your Harvard referencing. And I think APA is Harvard referencing. I was so scared when I heard about APA when I started this. And I learned that it was something that I already done in my first bachelor's degree, writing my reports. I also did curriculum, curriculum development. Yes, you created a syllabus, a curriculum. You created a curriculum followed by your lesson plans, how it's going to be followed. Oh, this was a tedious hour. And then you learn your classroom management, how you manage your class. This is very, 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 very important because a lot of us were teachers then. So we gave ideas on how we could manage our classes in a classroom. How can you how can you engage your students, come up with engaging class classroom activities? If maybe you've got one restless student, you can make sure that, um, you know, you engage them in a certain way. So we also learned about introduction to TESOL, introduction to statistics, research methods, 
which of course statistics will help you with your research method uh, project because you have to analyze your data. You also look at um, yeah, research, met research methods and educational research, systematic design and instructions. <laughs> I don't remember what this was. And material development, yeah, you develop your materials of teaching, like your your lesson plans, your worksheets, your, what do you call this? Uh, that's what you use to show your students, uh, flashcards. And then we also learned how, learned how this, this was my favorite part, teaching English to young learners, human growth and learning, language acquisition, social linguistics. So this was, uh, we looked at, we looked at the psychology behind our uh, people learning the language, the type of language and things that influence uh, someone learning a language, the stages of growth when babies grow, or how do they learn the language? What are the stages that they, they go through in learning the language? I was very much interested in this. It's more of like a psychology thing, uh, learning about you, you, the kid's brain and how they ended up acquiring the language. And lastly is like you prepare your field experience and you do your internship at an actual school. You prepare a report. I submitted my final report on the, on the last week of February and I got my results in April and I got my transcript in May. Yes, I graduated from Siam Technology College with a bachelor's degree in TESOL with a GPA of 3.7 out of four. <laughs> And I think I could have done better had I not failed. I've got a, I've got C. I've got C for my phonology because I flanked, I flanked, so I was flank. <laughs> I believe I did really bad. And I don't know, I deserve the mark, I guess. So with this degree, I don't really think you can fail it because once you submitted everything, you are sure of a grade. You are sure of a past grade C and above. Because a lot of coursework, uh, a lot of coursework. Come on, how do you fail a coursework? How do you fail something without exams? So you submit your assignments, you submit your reports, you do your presentation, and next thing you know, you prepare your, what do you call this, your journal, and then boom, you get your marks. So that's just it, guys. I just wanted to share my time. I'm very, very excited. This was, was it really hard for me? Oh, there were times where it was very difficult. That's why I had to like um, quit <laughs> two times. I deferred two semesters. That's why I finished in four and a half years. I could have finished in three and a half. You can finish this between three and five years. That's, that's the time that you are allowed. I don't know if anyone has gone over six years, but you can finish it as early as three years, as late as five years, I believe. So yeah, that's just it. Siam Technology College, go ahead and search for it. Or you can message me if you want me to connect you with, uh, with uh, the right people and tell them that you heard that I told you about the college. Maybe they'll give me my chancuras or something. <laughs> Other than that, thank you so much, everybody. I do see your comments. I'll respond to your comments. The, the next video will probably be how to apply for jobs because that's what uh, you guys asked me to do. I asked you if you wanted me to do it, and then you said yes. And I hope this is not going to be all over the place. This is just one take. And this is just one time. If it fails, I'm not going to share it. You're seeing this now. I guess you shared it. <laughs> Guys, I bought this from Zara. I guess this is my, this is my present. Look at it. <laughs> but your boy, that's, the boy doesn't have mine. Okay, guys. Peace out. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much. And I'm out.